Warning, this video contains information on some very sick people who have been committing inhuman acts to others. If you are easily triggered by the thought of blood, feces or the death of both humans and animals, please go ahead and close down the video. Hello and welcome to Eerie, where we today talk about the vampire of Sacramento. Richard Trenton Chase, born May 23, 1950, was an American serial killer, rapist, cannibal, and necrophile who killed six people in the span of a month in Sacramento, California. He was nicknamed the Vampire of Sacramento because he drank his victim's blood and cannibalized the remains. Chase developed hypochondria as he matured. Hypochondriasis, or hypochondria, is a condition in which a person is excessively and unduly worried about having a serious illness. An old concept, the meaning of hypochondria, has repeatedly changed. It has been claimed that this debilitating condition results from an inaccurate perception of the condition of body or mind, despite the absence of an actual medical diagnosis. Chase often complained that his heart would occasionally stop beating or that someone had stolen his pulmonary artery. He would hold oranges on his head, believing vitamin C would be absorbed by his brain via diffusion. Chase also believed that his cranial bones had become separated and were moving around, so he shaved his head to be able to watch this activity. After leaving his mother's house, believing she had attempted to poison him, Chase rented an apartment with friends. Chase's roommates complained that he was constantly under the influence of alcohol, marijuana and LSD. Chase would also walk around the apartment nude, even in front of company. Chase's roommates demanded that he move out. When he refused, the roommates moved out instead. Once alone in the apartment, Chase began to capture, kill, and disembowel various animals, which he will then devour raw, sometimes mixing the raw organs with Coca-Cola in a blender and drinking the concoction. Chase believed that by ingesting the creatures he was preventing his heart from shrinking. Chase spent a brief time in a psychiatric ward in 1973. In 1976, he was involuntarily committed to a mental institution upon being taken to a hospital after injecting rabbit's blood into his veins. His staff nicknamed him Dracula because of his blood fixation. He broke the necks of two birds he caught through the institution window and drank their blood. He also extracted blood from therapy dogs with stolen syringes. Chase was promptly diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. After undergoing a battery of treatments involving psychotropic drugs, Chase was deemed no longer a danger to society, and later, in 1976, he was released to his mother's custody. Chase's mother weaned him off his medication and got him his own apartment. He initially shared the apartment with roommates before all of them moved out thus leaving Chase on his own. Later investigation uncovered that, in mid-1977, Chase was stopped and arrested on a reservation in the Pyramid Lake, Nevada area. His body was smeared with blood and a bucket of blood was found in his truck. The blood was determined to be cow's blood and no charges were filed. On December 29, 1977, Chase killed his first known victim in a drive-by shooting. The victim, Ambrose Griffin, was a 51-year-old engineer and father of two. He attempted to enter the home of a woman two weeks later, but because her doors were locked, he walked away. Chase later told detectives that he took locked doors as a sign that was not welcome, but unlocked doors were an invitation to come inside. He was once caught and chased off by a couple returning home as they pilfered their belongings. He had also urinated and defecated on their infant child's bed and clothing. 
on January 23, 1978, Chase broke into a house and shot Teresa Wallen, three months pregnant at the time, three times. He then had sexual intercourse with her corpse while stabbing her with a butcher knife. He then removed multiple organs, cut off one of her nipples and drank her blood. He stuffed dog feces from Wallens's yard down her throat before leaving. On January 27th, Chase entered the home of 38-year-old Evelyn Miroth. He encountered a friend, Danny Meredith, whom he shot with his .22 handgun, then took Meredith's wallet and car keys. He then fatally shot Miroth, her 6-year-old son Jason, and her 22-month-old nephew, David Ferreria before mutilating Miroth and engaging in necrophilia and cannibalism with her corpse. A visitor's knock on the door startled Chase, who fled in Meredith's scar, taking Ferreira's body with him. The visitor alerted a neighbor who called police. They discovered that Chase had left perfect handprints and chewing prints in Miroth's blood. Chase was arrested shortly afterwards. Police who searched Chase's apartment found that the walls, floor, ceiling, refrigerator and all of Chase's eating and drinking utensils were soaked in blood. In 1979, Chase stood trial on six counts of murder. In order to avoid the death penalty, the defense tried to have him found guilty of second degree murder, which will result in a life sentence. Their case hinged on Chase's history of mental illness and their suggestion his crimes were not premeditated. On May 8th, 1979, the jury found Chase guilty of six counts of first degree murder and rejecting the argument that he was not guilty by reason of insanity, sentenced him to die in the gas chamber. His fellow inmates, aware of the extremely violent nature of Chase's crimes, feared him and according to prison officials, often tried to persuade Chase to commit suicide. Chase granted a series of interviews with Robert Ressler, during which he spoke of his fears of Nazis and UFOs, claiming that although he had killed, it was not his fault. He had been forced to kill to keep himself alive, which he believed any person would do. He asked Ressler to give him access to a radar gun, with which he could apprehend the Nazi UFOs so that Nazis could stand trials for the murders. He also handed Ressler a large amount of macaroni and cheese, which he had been hoarding in his pant pockets, believing that the prison officials were in league with the Nazis and attempted to kill him with poisoned food. On December 26, 1980, Chase was found in his cell, dead. An autopsy found that he committed suicide with an overdose of prescribed antidepressants that he had saved over several weeks. So that was the story of the Vampire of Sacramento. Take a deep breath and relax, knowing that this very sick person is now gone. And let's hope that the people that are doing awful things to others in the same way as Chase, who are alive today, ends up like Chase as well. Thank you so much for watching. And goodbye.